Hey folks, welcome back to Things We Said Today. What we're doing right now is just a little something extra uh, because uh, Darren and I uh, just witnessed the press conference that Ringo and his all-star band just gave at the Casino Rama in Toronto, which is where he starts many of his tours. And uh, we watched it virtually. Um, Alan, unfortunately, couldn't be with us to join us for this uh, little recap, if you will, of what took place during the uh, press conference, which lasted about an hour. But um, just your general impression of what you what you observed from it, Darren, and I'll talk about it myself, but first with you. It would, you know, it was uh, pretty much kept to basic questions, basic topics. Uh, and I think, the, I think it's a, it was more just to signal that Ringo's back with his all-star band and they're about to start a tour and it's been a few years and finally getting this thing going again. Um, more so announcing it than actually getting down and dirty with, you know, in-depth questions and whatnot about what they might perform or, you know, uh, why this musician this time out and where's Greg Raleigh or whatever. It mm. was pretty much all um, uh, surface stuff and uh, a way to kind of reintroduce the whole machine, the whole all-star band thing, which is... Uh, which they're back here finally. And I know Ringo did mention at one point that after this um, North American leg, uh, he's back out later in the year. So uh, the All-Star Band uh, is chuglin again. And basically that was, that was the whole purpose and you know, of the whole press conference. There wasn't any um, uh, big revealing bits of news. Um, Actually, there was one. <laughs> was that before I dialed in? Maybe. Uh, no, later on, I think. But uh, that is that Ringo said that he finished his new EP. I did not hear that. And that must have been just after I dialed in. Yeah. So I dialed in a little late, folks. I need a new watch. <laughs> okay. I don't know what made me think. And I was so happy, too. I don't know what made me think it was starting at 2.30. It started mm -hmm. at 2 o'clock. But I dialed in. I thought I was dialing like 20 minutes early. Uh, and then I realized, oh, I'm 10 minutes late. Uh, isn't that typical of me? So I kind of missed that. But I was curious if he was going to bring up any new music. And uh, so tell, tell me uh, what he had to say about the new, new EP. That he finished his new EP. That's the only thing that he said. He didn't give a title. He didn't give a release date or anything. So, um, but basically what you said just now really applies to the first, I would say maybe 10 minutes of the press conference. It was more about getting back on the road, how much they missed it. Ringo said that he missed four tours. Um, he said that he's been spending a lot of his time during the pandemic between recording his new music um, at the gym and painting. He yeah. also did. He also made mention of a few musicians he's played with via file sharing during the pandemic. That he's played on a bunch of albums, a bunch right. of other artists' albums over the past couple of years too. I remember him mentioning Ray Wiley Hubbard, um, but that was another thing that he kept busy with. He ended up probably playing more, making more guest appearances. I would think, uh, due to the pandemic and really being. You know, he has, has a studio in his house, so right. easy for him. Yeah, all these artists are sending him files, audio files, and all he has to do is lay down his drum tracks. Mm -hmm. So um, he brought up Colin Hay, um, Edgar Winter's tribute to Johnny, his brother. He plays on one of the tracks there. He kind of joked around that he was on, I think, 20 <laughs> albums, yeah. you know, yeah. but uh, that's an exaggeration. But he's been asked to, to, to drum on one song on an album for several artists like you said ray wiley hubbard yeah well. that was the name i remember him mentioning uh and 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 he did a good job ringo of letting the other members of the all-star band speak they were all there um and it was warren ham down there was a few different windows we ken and i were on this via zoom like we're recording the show hmm. warren ham was down at the end uh and then colin hay edgar winter uh, Ringo was in the middle with Steve Lukather next to him, Hamish Stewart, and then uh, Greg Bissonette. Um, 
And uh, they talked a little bit about, you know, Greg Bissonette talked about getting into drumming from having seen the Beatles back in the day and Ringo being an influence. Warren Ham talked about how uh, one of the, or maybe the highlight of his career and all the people he's played with is his current gig as the saxophonist in uh, the all-star band. So everybody chimed in a bit. Edgar Winter spoke uh, quite a bit, it seemed. Um, and I like what Edgar Winter said. This was something that kind of came up towards the end because, you know, they get, we're all getting older and it gets me down very often about the, you know, who's coming off the road. The B-52s are doing their farewell tour this year. Roxy Music is doing an anniversary tour this year that uh, Phil Manzanera says is going to probably be the last thing we ever hear from Roxy Music. But uh, Edgar Winter said uh, he's going to go till he drops. <laughs> you know, and you get the impression that Ringo is, if he could hold a stick, Ringo is going to be doing something. So, and I tell you, he, I'm watching him just sit there and speak in his mannerisms, his voice. He does not look like uh, he's going to be 82 this year. Right. He does well, not look like he's in his 80s at he, all. He did say, and he said this before, as long as I can hold my sticks, I'll keep playing. Right. <clears throat> I might be playing the blues. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> indicating you know slower music so it may not be as demanding for him but um really uh, all the musicians were bringing up the fact that they're so happy to be playing again and this is what they do um hamish said playing live is what we do it's our lifeblood he used that word lifeblood um greg bissonette said there's nothing like playing live in front of an audience Edgar Winter said, I love to play with Ringo anytime, happy to be back and to do what I love to do the most. I mean, these are people who, yeah, it's also their way of, of earning an income, but this is what's in their blood. They love going out there and performing. And, you know, if their, their current records aren't selling like they used to in the past, they always have performances. And when all is said and done, there are musicians that like to perform. This is what they set themselves out to do. That's what Ringo said. He knew very early on he wanted to be a drummer once he turned 13. Um, and he's living the dream. Mm -hmm. He said that a number of times. Uh, a lot of questions about Get Back, the documentary. Um, I wrote down a few comments here from Ringo. He said, it's very easy to watch even though it's very long, because I guess you can watch two hours at a time or you can put it on pause anytime you want to. And um, he said he, rem he remembered quite a lot of it because somebody had asked him, as you're watching this, did memories come back? Um, he said, yes. He says the difference was we had no songs to start with. Um, you know, in other words, in the very beginning of the, the Get Back sessions, everything had to be done from scratch. They didn't have any new songs to come in with, like John and Paula come into the studio with songs they'd just written. It wasn't like that. So in his memory, that's how he remembers. And also based on watching the documentary, these songs were created from scratch. And he also said, he doesn't remember how he got the shuffle beat to get back. He was looking in the film and he couldn't see any evidence of how that came about. He was, he was still wondering how he came up with that. Um, he also said that uh, Michael Lindsay Hogg's uh, direction of Let It Be was too down. Huh. And Peter Jackson did a great job. Um, he was asked if he'd like to see a documentary on anything else in his life that he did. And he said he'd like uh, a documentary on the Eddie Clayton group, <laughs> going back to his early years there. Um, yeah, not too much revealing, but more just the fact that they love doing this. This is their livelihood. And it doesn't matter whether they're 52 or 82, as Ringo is about to be. Um, and so you're very happy for them and Ringo looked great and he sounded great. Um, and that's, that's basically it. Uh, at the very end of, of this press conference, it was brought up because 
we received the very sad news today that Alan White has passed away. So um, Ringo was asked if he'd like to comment about it. And all that he could say was he was a really cool drummer, but he never really played with him. Mm -hmm. so i'm wondering because you know ringo and ellen white are are on all things must pass the album as is jim gordon um but it's possible that the days that ringo played alan wasn't there and vice versa i don't know but uh yeah and they're really that's one thing that was i always found a little uh, disappointing was that they didn't keep accurate track of who played on what and when and how that all worked together and how many people were, <clears throat> you know, uh, you know, on uh, on a track at a given time. So, I, you would think that Alan White and Ringo were probably played together, but like you're saying, maybe not. Maybe they just would pass each other in the halls because uh, Alan did do some work. Um, I think he's one of the drummers or the drummer on the Radha Krishna Temple record. Um, I don't recall where I saw that once, but he has some ties to some of the other Apple things too, Alan. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then of course, uh, tells the story about how um, he got the call to join Yes. He'd done, a, he had had some contact with the band and um, when they finished recording uh, Close to the Edge, Bill Bruford left to go to King Crimson and they were like days away from, going out on tour to support Close to the Edge. And they, uh, they invited Alan White to join the band. He joined and in three days learned their repertoire. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you can learn Yes's repertoire in a couple of days, three days tops, but uh, the Yes songs live album uh, and movie, uh, that's his debut. And 50 mm -hmm. years later, he was still playing, although he was slowed a bit. Uh, due to other health issues, physical ailments. He didn't play, really play uh, drums all that much um, live. Um, I don't know about in the studio if he, if he played on everything, but um, the last couple of times I saw Yes, he would come out basically during the encore for a couple of tunes. Um, and it, you know, sad news I hear that he passed. They had announced that he was missing, going to miss this upcoming tour the mm. 50th anniversary of Close to the Edge because of uh, health issues. And that was an announcement made just three or four days ago. Right. So, And of course, you know, in, in Beatle history, there's a lot more to Alan White, uh, of course, uh, playing at Live Peace in Toronto with the yeah. Plastic Colonel Band, being on Instant Karma on the single and being on the Imagine album as right. well. Um, in fact, uh, I think it was the last fest for Beatle fans before COVID. He was a guest there. Did you interview him? I interviewed him on the main stage in New Jersey. That was the last fest, right? 2019. I'm almost positive. Yes. yes. Uh, and then uh, I, you, you, I wish my mind would, would be more photo, you know, I almost have like a video camera in it so I could remember it more. I ended up spending a significant period of time with him. I, I want to say it was around an hour, maybe more, maybe a little less on Saturday afternoon at the fest at the bar after the, um, after we were on the main stage, I just happened to stop at the bar and Alan White and his wife, Gigi was sitting there and his wife, I believe it was the NCAA college basketball tournament, was really into the basketball. And I, I ended up actually talking more to his wife. But I just, a couple of times, I'm leaning on the bar going, I'm hanging out with Alan White <laughs> and his wife watching college basketball in Jersey City. But, you know, he was, you know, he was very quiet, but he was a gentleman and very sweet. And... Um, I, it seemed like he enjoyed having um, ha having attention given to some other aspect of his career, other than yes, you know, his time with John Lennon and stuff. So, right. you know, sad news to learn today of his death. Um, yeah, and and actually, around a year ago, I interviewed him too. Right, and he's on my YouTube channel. Very sweet guy, like you said. And uh, if memory serves correctly, and I got to go back and watch the interview, I think he said he drummed on most of all things must pass. 
Really? He only seems to remember Ringo being on a few songs. So, yeah. And if you read the book uh, that Ken Womack wrote with Jason Krupa, they have like a timeline for the musicians when they played certain okay, dates. Yeah, right, right, right. Yes. But it's hard to pin everything down and say, for each track, here's all the musicians. And unfortunately, right. on some of George's albums, like All Things Must Pass, Living in the Material World, the George Harrison album, they list all the musicians, but not track by track. Right. So be nice to know on every single song who played what. Yeah. So you have to kind of uh, do some guesswork or some kind of detective work to get closer to, to finding out accurately, if you can, every single song. Right. But, um, yeah, I, I feel really privileged that a year ago I got to interview yeah. him. If anybody wants to watch it, it's on my YouTube channel, Ken Michaels Radio. And um, very sad to hear this news. A mm -hmm. big, big part of the music industry. And, you know, you just said how he had to learn yes parts in three days. Three days. Very complicated stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Progressive rock is not easy to play at all. And the fact that he can balance that with rock and roll so well, the way that mm -hmm. he did it, he was an extraordinary drummer. Oh, well, well, not to end things on a sad note, but yeah. I do not have the dates in front of me. When is when does Ringo and his all-star band play Toronto? When's the first show? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the 27th of mm -hmm. May. And I believe he's doing a second show the next day. So. And I will be at all three of the New York City shows at the Beacon Theater. And you're going to be at one of them. And also someplace else you're going to see him? Well, I'm seeing a total of three Ringo shows. I'm going to the first show at the Beacon. So I'll see you there. Right. Uh, I'm going to see him at Tanglewood in Massachusetts. This is my first concert ever at Tanglewood. I've always heard the sound there is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. James Taylor is kind of really well known for playing there a lot. Okay. And so um, a lot of great classical concerts are done there at Tanglewood. So I'm going there. And then on the second leg of the tour, he's playing in Bridgeport, Connecticut, which is... <laughs> you know, 10 minutes from my house. And so uh, even though I already had tickets for two shows, how can I possibly say no? You're playing in your backyard, practically, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and that's where September is... 23rd, I'll be seeing him. But a total of three concerts altogether for Ringo and right. the Oscars. And I can't wait. Yeah, the only thing with me I find as I get older, going to shows three nights in a row, I'm actually kind of a little bit like, what kind of shape will I be in after three nights on the town? old man darren mm -hmm. tuesday wednesday the shows were spread out a little more when the tour was first announced what was it 10 15 years ago it seems like now uh -huh. uh, but uh and then mccartney later in uh two weeks after that well you know with me i'm seeing ringo at the beacon the first night and then i'm seeing paul at fenway park the next night oh so it's right, back right. to back and then I'm seeing Paul at MetLife, and you'll be at that one, right? I'll be there, yep. Okay, and then, then the next night is Ringo at Tanglewood. So they're back-to-back, -back, both hmm. nights. Okay. June 6th and 7th, June 16th and 17th. Back-to-back, -back, Paul and Ringo. All right. All right, well, uh, so that was our little recap of today's press conference in Toronto. Ringo Starr and his all-star band in advance of the 2022 should have been 2020, I guess, all-star band tour. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and that's that. And we miss you, Alan. Yep. He'll be back before yeah. you know it. Okay. All right. So, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you real soon. Take care.